When documentary filmmaker Michael Moore facetiously suggests where to invade next, he includes Iceland for its willingness to elect women to high office and put fraudster bankers in prison. Good reasons, but set jetters and tourists already invaded the country in numbers resembling a swarm of locusts. Reasons include hiking, climbing, skiing, luxuriating in natural steam baths, marveling at geologic forces, feeling awed by winter's northern lights, or going into rhapsodies of awe around adorable summer puffins. Iceland also offers a plethora of set jetting opportunities with international blockbusters that include the Marvel and DC universes, Jules Verne, James Bond, The Bible's Noah, Realms from Star Wars plus Game of Thrones, Ben Stiller on a skateboard, and some furiously fast drivers scaling frozen waters. But rather than make choices about which projects to honor with a pilgrimage, our group relied on a preset itinerary from Viking Cruises that took us around the island in eight days. We found a variety of diversions. Fred loves museums and collections, so here we are at the Phallus Museum in Reykjavik, which was on Liz's agenda. What have you learned here so far? It was amazing. <laughs> Fred, as somebody who specializes in collections, you're at the special museum in Reykjavik, and what do you think? Holy shit. We are up on the top of the, who knows how to say the H church that is shaped somewhat phallically or geologically. And we have to get back here to the Harpa to pick up a bus. So we're scheming on our route, which we think we can do. Oh, it's a tourist in Iceland. Reykjavik tourism, Fred. out and about looking at geysers on a photo excursion. The reason that Iceland doesn't have big power bills because they do all their heat with geothermal. You're making it one plate to the other? Yeah, and then we'll come back and take a picture of that. <laughs> All right, now we're going to the Pacific Plate. All the way. I think we did it. It's huge. Yeah. The two biggest ones are, I think, the Eurasian and the Pacific. This is the Pacific Plate. This is the city of Vigor, three houses. And it's owned by only three people that are living here all year long. So we've got Gisli, he was a, a truck driver in Antarctica and you might have spotted him uh, near, the, near the boat to help you. And you go from 300 to 60. Yep. But can you imagine the volume of 60? Yeah, I do. I will explain you a lot about the white light on the but also the main activity of the island. I down collection to collect the down. Arctic tern nesting area. They're not happy with us. Hmm. 
What are you gonna do? He's gonna attack us so we can keep going. Okay. John, you're pouring youth water here. We need water. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm going to look how much younger? At least 10 years. With yeah, one, right. With one cup. See, I, my John. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for lasers, it. And we use light. This is fresh water from the waterfall. How do you say the name of that waterfall? Um, Burnaufoss. Burnaufoss, and it means? Pressurized stream. Okay. Waterfall. This now is we have crossed the Arctic Circle and we have a certificate to tell us that we did that. It's done. This is the Arctic. How do you know? Well, it says so. Oh, you mean you got this certificate here? The one that... That certificate. Oh, it says you're above the Arctic Circle. Look at that. Wow. A nice look at Lake Meat and Nature Baths. They have another name too. Not being brave, I did not take my camera into here because I was afraid that it would fall in the water and die. Down below, it's a bit of a madhouse. People walking all over, including a Fred, dressed in his Christmas colors. That's the madhouse of trail it takes to get down here for a low view of the God of Lush, Waterfall of the Gods. Maybe we can catch somebody falling and breaking their arm. Another church in Europe and they want five euros just to go in and look at a nave? I don't think so. It says it's the city of elves, palace of elves, residence of Icelandic elf queen Borghildur. And it's okay to deal with elves. They're called hidden people because of how difficult it is to see them. They don't mind us passerbys as long as we respect their residence, which I think we did. We went to the top and we didn't say anything about Lord of the Rings up there. Sedes Fjordjör would make a good place for Nordic Noir. It's isolated. The cops have problems in a place like this of being isolated, entrapped or trapped. But one thing is that in Nordic Noir, there's always both a grumpy cop and a couple of murders, two, three, four. And in Iceland, the whole country, they might only have two murders in a year. But they do have visiting tourists like Liz and Fred. What is the theory behind this restaurant? Because you take local ingredients, but you're doing some other flares to it. And here, Liz has made it to the black sand beach. Yeah, did you want to uh, put your hand in it, show how it feels? Or? Oh, very fine, beautiful. A little moist from the tide. Do it again! Do it again! How long have you been chasing rocks? 32 years. Why You're getting warmed up. <laughs> and what is it you enjoy about the rocks? No, I, I, I was in the mountain hunting reindeer, and reindeer always running higher and higher, and I following them, and I start to see lots of rocks. This is flat out unbelievable. Can you imagine 20 or 30 ships squirting billions of gallons of water on this over a week solid to try to stop the flow from blocking the harbor? Unbelievable. We're backing in, apparently, which is incredible. Normally, you tender off of Viking cruise ships. We do a tender into the harbor, and the captain was very proud that he got permission to go into the harbor today. Impressive. You can see the seagulls nesting all over the hillside. You see the covers there. You start down your children's rock. You move yourself up to the dwarf, to the public, to the boot, to the latch to the grass, and then so on and so on. You take this long rope here, you 
you climb up to that short drop, use that short drop, just get higher with a long one. From above there you can jump up, you'll swing so hard, you can basically run on this cliff to the other side and then jump back down. This is the place <laughs> where tourists injure themselves. <laughs> now what you're supposed to learn here before you move on to the X is here you will always automatically start to turn. So that's usually when the panic kicks in, you start kicking your legs, you get your back against the rocks, you fall down, you break something. You're supposed to learn how to control that turn and kind of time it perfectly so you land with your legs in front. Now this is called the boot, you might see why. <laughs> now a good number to know is uh, 112. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 911. It's 112. One, Everybody should know that number. <laughs> good, good. Oh my goodness. Now this is really hard. I just make it look easy. <laughs> oh, oh. Puffin Rescue Center. This is the. Oh, I'm sorry, guy. I didn't mean to scare you. This is the closest we're getting to puffins. Well, good thing I wasn't really counting on seeing little gray and little white. Maybe you can see them from up above, but not over here. Feeding time, probably. Do you think I'm going to feed you? It ain't happening, dudes. Poor guy, yesterday your relatives were catch of the day and he ate them. Sorry about that. It's spent a month longer in Bespinata because the puffins have taste. <laughs> they want to end their vacation in Iceland, it's the prettiest place of all the places in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Obviously, here comes obviously. Local singer Swavarun provided music to accompany our Icelandic invasions.
Þú út í græna lauf 